Howdy, howdy everyone, Chris here. Welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to test out the Eastwood LT100 paint gun and the Finnish One FC720 clear coat. We'll talk about why this gun and clear coat might be perfect for your repair. So whether you got a small repair on your daily driver or you got a restoration project in your garage, this channel is dedicated to helping you get that project done. Let's get right to it and unbox this gun. We'll see what it comes with. This is the Eastwood Concourse LT100. This is a budget line of paint guns. It runs right around $100. Comes with this box with a tool and a couple cleaning brushes. But what's got me really excited about this particular gun is it only requires 4.25 CFMs of air to operate. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. That's the amount of air that this gun takes to operate consistently. This is really good news for you guys working at home with a smaller compressor. You're not going to need a huge compressor to operate this gun at its full potential. And hopefully you're still going to get a professional looking finish. But we're going to find that out soon because we're going to put this gun to the test. Eastwood produces a lot of materials and tools for auto body repair. This is my first tool from Eastwood or paint gun from Eastwood and checking out the body of this gun. It seems to be really well built. Everything seems to be machined really well, nice and smooth. The trigger feels nice and smooth as well and it feels good in my hand. In the box, you get the tool kit, you get the body of the gun and you get the cup as well. Now I will be using the cup today because I do not have the PPS adapter for this yet. Now I will be testing this today with my larger compressor, but in the future, I will be doing tests with this gun on a small compressor that you guys would be using at home. So let's go ahead and get this gun all cleaned up, set up for spraying, and then let's talk about the clear coat we're using today, which is the Finish One FC720 clear coat. This is the FC720. This is a clear we're gonna be using today. This is designed for overall paint jobs. You can use it for spot panels as well, but they do make a 710, which is designed for kind of like a speed clear, kind of like the max clear coat that we talked about last week. It dries a little bit quicker. It's dust free in 15 minutes. So I also have that and we'll be testing that clear as well. This is a high solids clear that mixes four to one. And this is a technical data sheet. Let's take a look at this. Looking at the TDS, you can see that it's dust free after 40 to 45 minutes. So this clear coat stays open a little bit longer. It dries a little bit slower and that's why it's an o for an overall paint job. You want that to dry a little bit slower when you're doing an overall paint job so you can get a nice flat finish. Okay, we got the LT100 all cleaned. We wanted to remove all the oils and dirt and we're doing a spray out test on it. And as you can see, it has a nice size spray pattern. That's about 11 to 12 inches from six inches away. So that's a good size spray pattern and I like the width of it as well. Uh, nice and wide, nice and uniform. Always try and do a fan pattern test before you start spraying your vehicle. You wanna make sure that is nice and uniform. If you get a particle of dust in your air cap, that's gonna distort that pattern and it'll affect how your metallics lay and how your paint job comes out. Okay, so we're gonna test this clear coat and this paint gun on a couple different things. We're gonna blend this door and blend the fender and then we're also gonna do a hood and a bumper cover. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that. But right now I'm using the 3M gun and I'm putting down some clear base coat and we're just doing that so we get a good blend with these metallics. Okay, so next I'm gonna use the LT100 to lay down the base coat. We're just gonna cover the primer, but I want you to listen to this gun as I spray with it. You can really tell just from the sound the gun makes that it's not using a ton of air. If this was the Iwata or the Segola, it would be much, much louder and just a lot more pressure. Here's a sound comparison of the Iwata and then the LT100.
big difference in the amount of pressure that you use to push these guns and get them to perform. Spraying the base coat with the LT100, I found it to perform very well. The LT100 was able to deliver a very uniform and consistent metallic orientation and an undetectable blend. I take all these reviews seriously. This is an unbiased review. This is my actual thoughts on this gun. I purchased this gun myself. I was not given this gun by Eastwood. One thing I will tell you, this is a little bit of a slower gun. So if you're looking to paint something really quickly and you paint fast, you're going to have to slow it down a little bit to use this gun because of the low CFMs. Having to paint a little bit slower with this gun really doesn't bother me personally because Typically, I spray a little bit slower anyway. Now, sometimes I do get in a hurry and want to spray something quickly. Um, but it's really not that big a difference. Now, if you were doing an overall paint job, it might affect you a little bit more, having to slow down for clear coat and, and things of that nature. Uh, but it's a trade-off, being that it's a low CFM gun that you can run off a smaller compressor. You're going to have to slow down a bit. That's just how it works. Okay, now we're ready for some clear coat. And as you can see, the base coat looks nice and silky smooth. Laid down a nice base coat out of this gun. Pretty impressed so far. Now it's time to lay down some clear coat. We're using the FC720. I'm going to use the same settings, 30 PSI, and actually I'm wide open on my material. Now you can see the speed I'm spraying at. It's not super slow. It's just consistent, really. Um, about six inches away, overlapping 70% and it's putting down a really nice finish. Now let me let you listen to it as I do it. Let's take a look how this gun and clear combination lay down on this hood. So you will notice I am moving a little bit slower on the hood. I really want to slick this hood out. So I want to put enough material on there to let it flow out. The FC720 clear coat really sprays out nice and easy. It flows out nicely. Now there's a few things I look for when I'm reviewing a clear coat, whether I want to continue using it or not. One thing is the cost. Now this clear coat runs $100 for a kit and you cannot beat that cost for this clear. Typically, as far as cost goes, I expect to pay for a good clear coat at least $160, $150, $160. I don't like to spend much more than that really because you can get a really good quality clear for that price. So at $100, this is a good value uh, for your money. The next thing I'm looking for is the DOI or the distinctness of image. I want good clarity and good depth in a clear coat. I also want to know that that clear coat's going to hold that gloss. So if you spray it and something looks really good, you come back the next day and it looks a little bit hazy or it dies back a little bit. So it doesn't have that uh, high gloss or clarity that you had when you first sprayed it, you know, that's that's a detractor for me. Now you can buff and polish it and get that gloss back, but I don't want to have to do that. So I want it to hold its gloss, and that's another thing for me. Now, the 720 clear coat, there is a little bit, I noticed, a little bit of dieback. It's not a ton, and it's not something I would, you know, I wouldn't quit using this clear coat because of that. But it is something to note, and it is something I want to mention to you. The next thing I'm looking for is how easy the clear coat is to spray. Some clear coats are a little bit harder to get a flat finish. Um, some flow out beautifully, and they come out flat. I mean, a lot of that is subjective, you know, depending on how you spray. But I can tell, being you know in this industry and painting a lot of vehicles, if a 
clear coat is a little bit more difficult to spray. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad clear. If it's more difficult, it's gonna be harder for you guys to get that finish that you wanna get. So that's what I'm evaluating when I'm looking at these clear coats. The next thing I wanna evaluate is I wanna know how it cuts and buffs. So how easy is it to wet sand and how easy is it to polish out? There's a lot, uh, there's a big difference in how a clear coat polishes out. Some clear coats get rock hard and they're difficult to polish, wet sand and polish out. So there's been, I've used clear coats that are very difficult to wet sand and you don't want any part of that, especially if you're doing an overall paint job. You don't want to have to struggle to get that finish flat and to polish out those scratches. So it makes a big difference on how a clear coat cuts and buffs. This stuff cuts and buffs nice and easy, like it should. And the other thing is durability. And all of these clear coats that I recommend to you guys are going to be really durable clears. They're going to be five to 10 year clear coats. Now, if you're wanting a show quality finish and durability, then you may want to step up to a higher end clear coat. I really hope you guys are finding value in the information I'm giving you here on clear coats and this gun. And if you are, do me a favor, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you've used this clear coat and have this gun, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you're looking for products or tools for your repair and want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description. Let's take a good look at the final results of using this LT100 paint gun and this FC720 clear coat. And I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so it's the next day, actually two days later. I painted this on Saturday, it's Monday morning. And I wanna show you the gloss of this FC720 clear coat and the finish that the Eastwood LT100 put out. And as you can see, it's a nice, Nice flat finish, has a little bit of texture to it, but nothing that's crazy. It's uh, really close to factory uh, texture. This actually came out pretty clean. And the clear coat has a nice clarity to it. It didn't die back at all. So that's one thing you're looking for with a good clear coat um, is it to maintain its shine, especially a couple days after you clear it. So. As far as the finish, looks good. I mean, I'm gonna work with this gun just a little bit. Obviously this was like the second time I used it. It's 30 PSI on the gun settings and three turns out on the clear coat. I might dial the clear coat back just a little bit to have it atomize it just a little bit better. But you know this gun uses only 4.5 CFM. So you're working with limited amount of, of air but it really performs really well and I think it is perfect for someone doing repairs at home. I mean, it was really easy to use. I don't think you'll be disappointed with this gun or this clear coat. If you want to build your skill, click on one of these videos now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.